battle outside. A three-year-old boy shot in the head, a suspect arrested facing charges. We're tracking the brand new details. It's on the internet, it's at the schools, it's everywhere. It's something that you need to be aware of. Human trafficking scare, the video being spread like wildfire, but what's actually happening, police officials say, is totally different. You never know the ones that are in prison how bad they can really be. A Tennessee correction official murdered in her home, an inmate now on the run, drawing eyes from across the country. Through 75 counties and hundreds of investigations, from the most violent crimes to petty infractions, this is Arkansas Crime Watch with Mitch McCoy. A three-year-old boy shot a northern Arkansas man arrested in the case. Good evening, I'm Mitch McCoy. Thanks for joining us on Fox16.com. This happened in Searcy County. Authorities believe the man fired toward the road from his home. While that child has been released from the hospital, investigators in the thick of their case tonight. Detectives tell us 64-year-old Tom Wyatt is facing aggravated assault and third-degree battery charges. Our Tyler Thomason tracking it all. This dish is time to clean up. Honestly. A down home feel greets you at Alicia's River Market and Grill in Searcy County. It's, you know, it's country. Flo Campbell and her sister, who owns the eatery, grew up not far away on South Wilbham Road, a road that on Wednesday got the attention of the sheriff's office. Yeah, we got a call about six, and the caller stated that a three year old child had been shot. It's my understanding that the child uh, had an injury to the head. Investigators scoured the gravel path nearby, searched a home, and eventually ended up with a man in handcuffs. Arrested an individual from that property that we were told had fired a shot, and he also admitted to firing a shot. We're told the boy was walking in the roadway with two adults and another child when a bullet hit him. The child's survival left investigators speechless. I don't know what to say. The good Lord had his hand on him. That's all I can all I can add to it. The family late Thursday identified the boy as Cole Hancock. His father shared these photos from the boy's hospital bed. News of the shooting spread to the restaurant where South Wilbham Road rings a bell and rehashes memories of notoriety. Well, when we was growing up, there was some of that kind of same stuff that went on. It's really sad. Moving to the capital city tonight where a video on Facebook is spreading like wildfire. The woman's post causing alarm and all the buzz online. But what's actually happening are entirely two different stories. Hillary Hunt is on the case. I honestly would have shared it because there's so many things going on in Little Rock that we don't know about. A Facebook video viewed almost 100,000 times and counting as those shares continue to climb. All these things need to be out there. I think they need to be posted, not just for me because I know it. How about my daughter? This video shows flashing lights from Little Rock police and a white van in a store parking lot on Bowman Sunday. The poster called it a trafficking van with a warning to women and children. Um, sharing a video of that presence without any knowledge of its validity is actually very careless and uh, it, it creates unnecessary panic. This undercover LRPD detective and a police report confirms it was anything but human trafficking. Okay, so in reference to the video, can you ever recall a time with the department that you ever worked a human trafficking case where it involved, you know, someone getting picked up in a parking lot in a white van? I don't know of any. The detective tells me this video and the van is an example of a huge misconception. This is not the face of human trafficking. It could be anything, anywhere. Um, it's on the internet, it's at the schools, it's everywhere. The detective tells me the biggest concern to date is how the internet is used in these types of crimes. Definitely understand how to be safe on the internet. Don't meet up strangers. And despite the video starting an untrue rumor, the detective tells me it opens a conversation platform. Definitely just know who you're talking to. Simple steps can keep you safe. You're aware of your surroundings, that you pay attention to what's going on, what your children are talking to. 
A good warning tonight. A North Arkansas man has been booked into jail, accused of sending explicit photos to a 14 year old girl on Facebook. Izzard County deputies arrested 46 year old Derry Hart. According to an arrest affidavit, the victim and her mother notified authorities about it. Detectives began communicating with Hart on the girl's Facebook page and detectives say Hart continued to send nude photos. He faces a sexual indecency charge. Authorities arrested a Little Rock man on multiple child porn charges. State police say Donald Slusher was taken into custody for possessing and distributing child pornography. When they searched his apartment, they found a number of electronic devices with explicit images. They also found crystal meth. Police in Jacksonville have been busy solving a case involving a grandmother being dragged by her own car during a robbery. Take a look at this video. You see that man in the red or uh, pink shirt there walk up and slide right into the driver's side door there and try to drive off. A woman comes up to try and stop him, but the man gets away. She's being dragged right there. Officers managed to arrest Brian James shortly after his getaway. Investigators believe James dumped the car at a nearby Walmart shortly after. The victim says he only got away with her cell phone and about $30 in cash. The search for the man who police believe killed a mother and her four year old son in June is intensifying. Camden police continue to look for 23 year old Jory Worthen. In June, investigators believe he could be in the Wichita, Kansas area. Officers found Alyssa Cannon and her four year old son dead in their home back in June. We want to turn to our neighboring state in Tennessee where there is a desperate manhunt happening for an inmate who authorities believe is responsible for the murder of a correction employee. Janice Broch is on the scene. Knocked on my door a while ago and said we'd like to search your house and I said that'd be a good idea because I haven't even done that. Ellen Strong lives just down from the West Tennessee State Prison in Lauderdale County, just down from this roadblock. Everyone is on high alert since word got out that Curtis Ray Watson escaped, taking off on a tractor. Very, very scary. Very scary. And I do know that the prison's right down the road. Watson was assigned to work as a farm worker at the prison. He is suspected of killing prison administrator Deborah Johnson, who was found dead in her home around 1130 on the prison grounds. It is not clear when Watson escaped. Immediately following, the facility was locked down and the official inmate count was conducted. At that time, inmate Curtis Ray Watson, 364744, was found missing from a work detail. A manhunt started looking for Watson in the acres and acres of farm fields and woods surrounding the prison. The search was made difficult because of torrential rain. Cars driving on surrounding roads were checked. Deborah Johnson worked for the Department of Correction for 38 years. Bert Staggs worked with Deborah Johnson for a little over a year and a half, more than a decade ago. She was a really fine lady. Um, what I knew with her, um, there was never any conflict with staff or inmates. He treated everybody well and with respect. Curtis Watson was convicted of especially aggravated kidnapping and aggravated child abuse. He is 5'11", 180 pounds. He could have changed his appearance but cannot hide the many, many tattoos on his body. Tattoos of skulls and devils and other similar images. He is a man considered very dangerous. You never know the ones that are in prison how bad they can really be. Officials at a central Arkansas cemetery believe an old headstone was stolen earlier this month. It all happened at Thomas Cemetery in North Little Rock. A clear area in the ground marks where the historic marker once sat. The man who takes care of the upkeep says he was working one day and noticed the grave marker was gone. Brenda Fry lives directly behind the Thomas Cemetery and can't believe what happened. Even the, the dead can't rest in peace because People like that, they do they do it for the fun of it? Do they do it as a dare? Or do they do it because they're stupid? And maybe a little bit of all three, right? The Cemetery Association says it's hard to put a price tag on a gravestone like that, but they believe it's about $1,000. If you know anything about what happened, you're asked to call the North Little Rock Police Department.
A group of faces on a wall, no answers, but they aren't forgotten. The White County Sheriff's Office has a unique way of keeping their cold cases alive. Caitlin Reardon shows us how. So we kind of wanted to give life to our victims. Immortalized in the detectives division of the White County Sheriff's Department are 10 faces of victims whose stories aren't finished. When you think of a cold case file, you think of a file that's filed that all the leads have been worked, so it's filed away in a drawer. But here, these faces. Jane Murdaugh was actually found brutally beaten in her home. And the circumstances surrounding their deaths. He had died as a result of blunt force trauma. Or disappearances. He went missing in April of 1999 are a daily reminder to keep working. We have not forgotten them. Detective Heather Meadows says for some victims, new leads continue to come in. In March, detectives followed a lead that took them to BB for a dig they hoped would result in finding the remains of Douglas Kirk. That led us to being able to obtain a search warrant signed by a judge. But the search turned up no new evidence. Other cases like the one they call the man under the bridge is less promising. So to this day, we still do not know who this actually is. To Meadows and the other detectives working these cases, it doesn't matter if it's been 10, 15, or even 25 years. The need for closure for the families and accountability for the people who did this is just as important as today's cases. They matter, and I want their families to know that they matter and that we are still actively working them. No victim forgotten. There is another case White County detectives are working. Michael Morris went missing in late January of this year from Jackson County. He was last seen near the county line of Jackson and White. If you think you know anything about this case or you might be able to uh, help detectives in this case, you're asked to give them a call. Tonight's mug of the week goes to Megan Whitley Peak. Miss Peak was booked into the Pulaski County Jail last week. She's facing several charges ranging from driving with a suspended or revoked license, improper lane change, and obstructing governmental operations. We want to remind you that all of the mug shots that you've seen tonight and all of the cases that we're talking about, all of the suspects are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Remember, if you have any information on any of these cases we talked about tonight, you are asked to call your local police department. As we leave you, this is a look at Arkansas's most wanted. These individuals are being hunted by Arkansas Community Correction right now. If you know where any of these people are, you're asked to call 911. Have a safe week, and I'll see you tomorrow night on Fox 16 News at 9.